we conclude the first letter in Geris HaKadosh in the holy letters of the Alter Rebbe. We spoke yesterday about feeding, strengthening, revitalizing our faith. Faith meaning that God is real. How's he real? Because he's imminent and transcendent at the same time. And um, how do we feed that faith? Is through the study of the oral Torah in particular. Why the oral Torah? Because the oral Torah reveals the divine will of God. Even though Torah in general is food that nourishes the soul, as it as we internalize it in our minds, get it in our minds, then it feeds the soul. It feeds divine wisdom. But the truth is, it's much more than divine wisdom. It's an expression of the divine will. And the oratora is particularly the expression of the divine will because in the written word, it tells us to keep the Sabbath, tells us to put on these phylacteries, these things, totafos, uh, uh, an ois, and they're tefillin, but not clear what that is. It's only oral tradition that truly elucidates, brings clarity to the divine will. Which the divine will is a transcendent thing beyond. So when we study that in a way that we understand it, integrate it, internalize it, we're taking that which is transcendent, internalizing it, and that feeds faith. It's also a transcendent quality. And that's why the oral Torah metaphorically is like a crown, just as the crown uh, encompasses the head beyond the head, beyond the intelligence, so that likewise the oral Torah has that quality. And as further we said yesterday, if you recall, that's why a woman is a crown of her husband. Now, um, so there's a simple meaning to that, but the metaphor in that is that the written word is metaphorically the father or the husband, the, the male quality which just as male physically has just a seed, which with that seed, if it's not gestated through the woman in nine months, it's not um, developed. So that's exactly what divine wisdom is. Revealing it as the woman does is the oral Torah revealing the teachings of the written Torah, which is male. Female, then, is the oral Torah. And therefore, it's the crown, because ultimately, it reveals the true divine wisdom. That's the metaphor. Then, with all this, then, we said, so, strengthen yourself with the teachings. When, specifically? is a good time to strengthen faith through the teachings of the oral Torah. So specifically, was a time of prayer? Because a time of prayer is a time that the heavens are open, morning time prayers, that you should um, be able to, through your prayers, and not just through your prayers, but through your faith. What's the point of the faith? Is girding your loins, Right, that was your faith metaphor. And by strengthening the, uh, the loins of your faith, now you have stronger loins, stronger faith that upholds the mind, that the mind could think properly, could understand and appreciate God's goodness in our lives and the wonders that we have from God. And so much more as we explained previously. And then that will lead to feelings of love and awe. Now, when are the feelings of love and awe the most appropriate or the most specific time to be used is in prayer, right? That's the idea of prayer. The idea of prayer is to develop the heart, the emotions, that the natural tendency of the emotions is to be bound up to things, to material things, or maybe even other things too, but things 
and we want to work and it shouldn't be bound up to a thing god's not a thing it's god <laughs> he's no thing <laughs> all right and that when so through prayer that's when we're what we're developing so that learning that fe uh, feeds the faith and by the way that's important to uh, you know we learn hasidic teachings which is the part of the oral tradition like tanya before prayer so we can have a clarity in the will of god and that that will then feed our faith in such a way that when i come to pray there'll be a greater love and awe of god in the prayer so that's what we learned till now um that's what we learned till now the alta Rebbe today is the third part of the letter as i mentioned uh, previously that each part was really actually written different times that's uh not so no, not important but this last part the alta Rebbe says um he's making a twofold request of Hasidim. Those who are near and those who are far, he says. Making a twofold request. What is your request? And on weekdays, people who are engaged in business who don't have that much time because they have to make a living, they should not lead the congregation in prayer. They shouldn't do it. It should be only those who have the time like teachers um, or those who are supported by their parents meaning like someone who's still studying Torah after getting married they should lead the morning service because they have more time on their hands that's the general principle over here and uh, the prayer service he says should last about an hour you know an hour and a half which is by the way quite lengthy for a weekday prayer service we probably have here in our shul one of the slowest uh, services even though you know people look coming in and out but this one of the slowest services and uh, it lasts anywhere to 45 minutes depending on who's leading 45 minutes to uh, over just over an hour but here he says an hour and a half so uh, I'm, I'm just learning what it says over here and we'll you know we'll get back to this uh, later and um, those who are leading should be chosen by lot or by consent of the majority of the congregation and and again from those people who have more time and they're not in a rush and that they these people the leaders should gather other people who are also not rushed who can be around the leader in order to i guess to create an atmosphere of much more engaged prayer and the altar of it says uh, very strong words that this should not be changed i beg and beseech you very powerful very powerful then he continues in the second part of the request is that when it comes to shabbos and the holidays when people have more opportunity to pray at length to more devote concentration with their heart and soul towards god and, and moreover he says that it's actually the duty of those who um six days a week as the verse says you shall work and these people are you know very engaged in at work uh but the seventh day you shall rest so what does that mean you make a uh, actually on the seventh day you shall make a shabbos to the lord your god meaning devoted to god how do you devote it to god well in this instance the focus over here is through prayer I mean, it's also he doesn't mention that over here but it's also got to do with learning for bringing you know um spending time with uh, with, uh, with with the family with children you know and, and so on and so forth but the, the the focus over here is to god and to god specifically over here means your heart giving over to god through prayer and then therefore those who could not step 
down to the ark and lead the congregation during the week because they were busy um, with business and didn't have the time. So they, uh, they can lead the congregation then. Then in conclusion, the Alta Rebbe says, that, and, and, and this uh, may sound a little strange, um, is that I'm going to send spies to the community, to all congregations, to find out if the people that have the time are being slothful in their engagement in prayer, or are they truly working on themselves to focus in on the prayers and to connect. And the author of it says that those who are not taking this seriously, you have to understand these are people, of course, who are committed to uh, to the altar, you know, not talking about someone who is not committed to the path uh, that he has set for them, but people are committed, but they're being slothful. So the altar of it says that they should know that they're going to be pushed away with two hands from here. In what way they'll be pushed away? That they can't come and hear my teachings. Right? Can't come and hear my teachings. Um, We'll get back to that, okay? And from the negative, you can infer the positive. In other words, those who really do engage, so they'll be, you know, welcome with open arms and, uh, you know, to hear the teachings. And he concludes and says, Pleasant be the lot of those who hearken. May, their, may the blessing of goodness light upon them. And there is no good but Torah. Okay. That's uh, the teachings. Let's go a little more, um, well, make it somewhat practical, even though this was practical uh, in a sense, or maybe for some, maybe for some not, and um, my take on it. So, um, first of all, <laughs> many times I have people, when they come to synagogue, they ask me, what time are the prayers over? Like they come, the first question they ask, what time are the prayers over? I know what that means when you ask that question. It means I have to go through this now for what, whatever reason, maybe because I'm saying Kaddish for you know, a loved one that passed away, or maybe um, I'm, uh, you know, I know I got to pray, so I pray. But really, I only see this as a, you know, a, a point of passing to move on to, you know, whatever else I got to do in life. Um, and many people look at prayer that way. And that's why, you know, amongst Jewish people, uh, when the people come to synagogue, three times a year, two days Rosh Hashanah, one day Yom Kippur, or some people, it's just the one day on Yom Kippur. Why? Uh, on a simple level, it's just, uh, you know, uh, it's a time of judgment, you know, it's a time of atonement. And so, you know, so we need the prayers so we can get something. We need a thing here in my life. I need who's going to live, and I want to be part of those that are living, and I want to have not just part of those that are living, but I want to have, you know, good stuff for the good things for the coming year. And that's how many people look at prayer. The al through his teachings, um, wants us to appreciate, no, prayer is a manner of service of God. As a matter of fact, it's one of the novelties of the Baal Shem Tov's teachings is till then, you know, study of Torah. Uh, you were, if you were a scholar, you were honored. Um, the, the study itself is very, you know, fills the person, as we mentioned before, that Torah study, uh, we, it's like food that is digested. So Torah study can, can fill you and, and actually, you know, can fill your ego too and make you kind of full of yourself um, and even a, a religious Jew could be that way full of Torah full of self and uh, the Baal Shem Tov said well you know yes we need a study story is, is essential no question about it uh, as we know as we do this every day but there's an, another part of serving God and that's with your heart through prayer, that prayer is not just a means to get somewhere or to get something from God. It is about a connection. So the Altarev is saying over here that, you know, 
if the connection is real and prayer is truly what it's meant to be so you're going to take the time now you know an hour and a half we don't do that here As a matter of fact the other day um had the one who was leading the minion it was over an hour took the prayers for a weekday so i said you know the altitude is going to be very proud of you <laughs> i said to him um, most uh, congregations a weekday uh whatever much it's less in any case you know, i think what's important for us is the mindset that that prayer it's not a, about a, getting something from God. And therefore, you know, well, I only have one thing I have to ask for God today, so it's not, you know, it's not much. And, you know, I'll get over with it. I'll do my, the deed. Uh, no, prayer is a way to serve God, specifically about how I can engage my heart, refine my heart, connect my heart that is naturally connected to material things or self-directed things maybe even of a spiritual nature but self-directed not god-directed that's what davening is and that's why the altar Rebbe says so makes it so serious because you want to have torah study you want to hear my teachings well the point of my teachings and this ties in with the with, with the whole idea over here you know, learn Torah so it, uh, oral Torah so it feeds your faith, right? Your loins get strengthened, which is your faith. And that holds you upright. But what's an upright person? That the head is held up by the loins, that now you can have a proper perspective on life, on God, your relationship with God. And that that ultimately should lead you to love and awe, to the heart that the heart is engaged. So the, the whole letter over here is ultimately that we reach the heart. The heart is the hardest place to reach. It's much easier to sit and study Torah because you engage the mind and the mind is uh, more is, has an objectivity uh, more so and um, you can inspire it. But to inspire the heart towards God, not to, you know, to inspire the heart towards an ice cream, it's not inspired. That's it's where it's at. To inspire it to have material, spiritual pleasure, that's where the heart is at. But to inspire it, that it has a pleasure in the divine in God through prayer, and that it's prolonged so that is an effort so everybody whatever your level is if all you spent was two minutes till now or 20 minutes till now um the attitude is to try to recognize that prayer is not about me asking god i need this i, I need this for me i need this that thing for you know my uh my and my uh, uh you know elderly uh parent and uh, for this one that and 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 thank you god um that's a means to an end look at prayer as an end in itself and not just as an end in itself but in a sense in this letter and this teachings over here it's the 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 goal the goal faith is not the goal Faith is the loins that's holding up the, the body that you're upright, that engages the mind in a healthy, proper way because of proper faith in that mind then will lead you to a love and awe of God. And where was that going to be specifically expressed is in a time of prayer. It doesn't have to be the only time, but that's the, the, the um, you know, more, more likely. Now, as we've mentioned before, the love and awe of God doesn't mean that you have a palpable feeling in your heart necessarily so be it but you know I, I you know i don't think we're going to have that really and honestly um but that god is my true reality is my life and and that uh and that therefore there's this love and awe of god even if it's just an intellectual love or um a, a heart or, or a, a a a mindful love right that isn't palpable 
that is amazing but it is with this mindset is the the key over here what the ultimate is introducing to us and that we have the capacity everybody on their level and uh, we shouldn't get caught up on the length of time um, but get caught up in the the notion of that time so i'm not going for something in other words that i i want through this to get something else it's not a means to an end it's an end in itself and the end is the heart that the heart has an awareness of god a connect a sensing the connection to god um again in in, in a manner that is uh, uh refining us that's my take over here. Any questions, any comments, any thoughts? Um, powerful idea, as always. As always, I'm going to go on Facebook before I lose the feed. Um, see any questions and then I don't see any on Instagram reminder excuse me to put two question marks before you ask the question so that way I can see clearly it is a question so I won't overlook it Tina, when is Yom Kippur and what was the three-day event? Two days Rosh Hashanah, one day Yom Kippur. Um, I don't have the calendar in front of me, so I can't give you the exact date. Uh, you know, someone can put it up on for me. I don't know where is my calendar. Okay, somewhere. Not at my hands. <laughs> Rabbi Fine. Yes. It was either Linda or Denise. Someone answered the question for you. Okay. Perfect. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Um, uh, to, uh, okay. Tina. Um, I'm not um, any suggestion okay um, that's a good question I have to think about that okay get back to that Tina okay any questions any comments anybody from Clubhouse I don't see on Instagram anything anybody questions um, Michelle Yana um, who else is here Vilma, Marcy. Okay, I guess there's clarity. Um, the Tanya journals are going out. And um, this is good for four months. Uh, it's going to truly change your life by engaging in the Tanya journal as uh, those who have done it who have been doing it and it really um, um, very real makes you own the teachings so please uh, sign up if you haven't yet uh, Tanya Rabbi TanyaRabbi.com 
Reminder that we are learning Rambam today at 12.45, starting the laws of blessings, which is very interesting and um, important. How we, the, how we make blessings, when we make blessings, what's the, uh, you know. Okay, I know now that. Heather says that prayer is to be approached as an opportunity for it to connect with love and all. Excellent. Right, opportunity, beautiful. Um, John, I know now that the love and awe of God is best done in prayer. It should not be hurried or hastened, but should be done with contemplation beforehand by those with sufficient time. Yeah, everybody according to what your timetable is, but it's it's a real engagement as opposed to we're getting through this. Um, Excellent, thank you. Levi, I know now that prayer is our connection to God. Prayer in itself, rather than the length, is the pathway to the heart, inspiring it with an awareness of God. Very good. Very good. Okay, that's it. All right, folks. Um, Rabbi uh, Fine? Yes. Go ahead. Hi, I just wanted to say that I wanted to encourage everyone who has not yet started the Tanya Journal to go ahead and give it a try. It is amazing the... Um, the results that you would achieve while you're working on while you're working on yourself and your connection to Hashem and to others it's a the most amazing thing and the results will just like really surprise you I just want to encourage everyone if you haven't tried it yet go ahead and get your Tanya journal Tanya journals and uh, go ahead and work on that great thank you for sharing that appreciate it Excellent, excellent. Okay, folks, tomorrow we start the second letter. I'm Rabbi Rodney Fine coming to you for Chabad, Zich and Kadesh, Montreal, Canada. It's a privilege and a pleasure to share with you the Tanya. Have a wonderful, great day. Thank you for joining.